previous session we were discussing responses of organisms to various abiotic factors. There we were discussing like organisms will be categorized under two or four types. Some act as regulators, some act as confirmers, some organisms might suspend their metabolism, some they migrate to the favorable conditions. So that topic we are doing and in the previous session we discussed about regulators. Now let us continue confirmers, migrators and suspenders in today's session. So we are with the topic responses to abiotic factors right so responses to abiotic factors under this we already discussed about regulators we already discussed about regulators and we told very few organisms are able to regulate their constant or they are able to maintain constancy in homeostasis by maintaining homeostasis in terms of body temperature in terms of osmotic concentration right so the next category are confirmers now let us discuss what are confirmers so since we told very few organisms they come under regulator category that means we mean to tell that majority of the organisms comes under confirmers only. Then what are confirmers? Confirmers these are those organisms which are unable to maintain constant internal conditions. They are unable to maintain constant internal conditions means if the external temperature changes their body temperature also will change. If in aquatic animals if you take if the water concentration outside changes means inside also it has to change the osmotic concentration. So that means they are unable to maintain constant condition. So that category is called as confirmers. So if you see regulators are beneficial when compared to confirmers. But then we were telling very few organisms come under regulator category overwhelming 99% of the animals and all the plants comes under confirmers only. Let us write down that point. So we can tell that. And overwhelming means approximately 99% of animals and all plants, all plants were unable to maintain constant. Internal conditions. They were unable to maintain constant internal conditions. Right? If the external temperature increases, if the external temperature increases, then in these organisms, internally also temperature will increase. If the external temperature increases, then the body temperature of these organisms also increase, right? Because they can't maintain constant internal conditions. And again, in aquatic organisms, if the osmotic concentration increases if outside the water concentration increases then the water concentration in organism also will increase they will also increase so, then such type of organisms are simply called as confirmers such type of plants and such type of animals are simply called as confirmers. Means we can tell that these organisms means such type of organisms and such type of organisms. These organisms are simply called as confirmers. They are called. So I think you understood what are confirmers. The organisms which cannot maintain constant internal conditions and keep changing with the external environmental conditions in terms of temperature 
and osmotic concentration are called as confirmers and majority of the animals are confirmers only and all plants are confirmers only. Now the point comes into our mind like when regulators are better in survival than confirmers in the course of evolution why didn't the confirmer change itself into a regulator right. So when two things are there which is a better one we will choose that. So under regulator and confirmer which is the better one which has more chances for survival regulators have more chances for survival. Then the question what we are asking is why couldn't the confirmers change themselves into regulators when that is a better mechanism. Then we tell that we can uh, simply ask another question like how many among the human population can effort purchasing an air conditioner in order to regulate their uh, conditions in order to maintain the coolingness right. So only very few percentage of population will be there who can effort buying an air conditioner and buying and paying the bill for that electrical bill for that. Majority of the other population what they will do since they don't have that much money to buy, buy an air conditioner they will sweat by sweating they are reducing their body heat and means they are reducing the temperature uh, suboptimal. And then their what is it, activity also, then their uh, functioning also will not be efficient. A person who is working in uh, AC room and the person who is working sweatingly, there will be a difference in their performance also. A person who is comfortably working in air conditioner will work better than the one who is profusely sweating. So his professional efficiency will decrease we are telling, right? So then the question is why didn't confirmers change into regulators means here we are telling it is money problem everyone cannot effort here also the same thing here. So thermoregulation is an energetically expensive process. So why they are not able to confirm, confirm why they are not able to transform confirmers into regulators means what is the answer? Why are the confirmers not converting into regulators means what is the answer? We are telling like thermoregulation is an energetically expensive process. Thermoregulation is energetically it is an expensive process. It is particularly true for the organisms which are small in body surface. Thermoregulation is an energetically expensive process and we will tell loss of heat. Loss of heat, it depends upon the surface area. Is dependent on surface area to surface area to volume ratio we will tell. Loss of heat is dependent upon surface area to volume ratio. So the small animals will have, if you take small animals, small animals will have their surface area to body ratio more. Small animals which are having more surface area to volume ratio. The small animals which are having more surface area to volume ratio will lose more heat. Since their surface area is more, they can lose more heat. Easily they can lose their heat. So because they are losing their heat, then they have to do more metabolism to generate more heat to maintain the temperature, right? So that is why we tell that in polar regions, so hardly or rarely small animals will be found because if it is a small animal, surface area to volume ratio is more. If surface area to volume ratio is more, if surface area is more, then it loses more heat. When it loses more heat, again it has to come to its comfort zone, it has to maintain its temperature, means it has to generate energy, it has to generate heat. How do it generate heat energy? By doing metabolism. So that means it's an energetically expensive task to maintain, to maintain that temperature. So that is why in polar regions, rarely small animals will be found. You see the polar bear, you see the other animals which are in the polar regions, they'll be huge and hefty in their size. Why? 
to minimize their surface area to volume ratio so that the loss of heat from the body also will not be more okay so you understood till here i think we are discussing what are confirmers how much percent of animals are confirmers and all the plants are confirmers what are confirmers organisms which cannot able to regulate their internal conditions in terms of body temperature in terms of osmotic concentration are called confirmers and we are telling regulators are better than confirmers then why didn't confirmer change into a regulator so if it has to regulate means it needs to spend energy now thermoregulation is an energetically expensive process if it has to regulate the temperature it has to spend energy and uh, making energy is an expensive process it has to do so much of metabolism and losing the heat from the body depends upon surface area to volume ratio that is why in polar regions we are telling organisms will be huge size for example you take our example only so like a person like us and a small child school going child so who will have more surface area to volume ratio tell me so surface area to volume ratio means it is height to weight so when compared to our height to weight it will be less with that of a child chain will have more height to weight ratio when compared to our height to weight that means those people will lose more more heat from their body their basal metabolic rate will be more than us that's why their respiratory rate will be more their heart beat will be more in the same manner small animals will have more surface area to volume ratio so that is why they lose more heat from the body so then if they are losing more heat they need to maintain that heat in the internal conditions they have to do metabolism so if they have to do metabolism then it's again an expensive process so that is why only in the course of evolution we tell that only few organisms have evolved into regulators majority 99% are confirmers only we will tell all right now we will tell that so in nature there are no strict confirmers and there are no strict regulators you know so partial confirmers and partial regulators are also there in the previous lecture when we were discussing about the plot we discussed external limits and internal limits and we told like yesterday class we discussed here is an internal limit and this is the external limit and this is internal limit and then we told the one which increases with if the external conditions are increasing if the internal conditions also are increasing then they are called this one only confirmers whatever the external conditions with internal conditions are maintained now what are these called they are regulators and talking about partial confirmer or partial regulator so to certain extent it behaves like a confirmer there are certain animals as i have given example of ground squirrel and shrew camel also we can take the example so to certain extent when the external conditions are increasing its body temperature or its osmotic concentration will increase the ambient temperature inside the body also will increase beyond this point means till here what it is it is a partial confirmer till here what it is partial confirmer because it is following the flow of the confirmer after reaching a particular point then it will become a regulator it will become a regulator so we can call it as a partial regulator since here it is a partial confirmer we can also call it as a partial confirmer or partial regulator anything is the same what are the examples for this category so we can take ground squirrels shrews okay and camel as an example right now so we talked about regulator confirmers and partial regulator now if the unfavorable conditions are localized or they are only for a particular period of time then the organisms have two more alternatives what are the two more alternatives either they can migrate to the new places or they can suspend their metabolism so apart from confirmer and regulator we can tell there is an other category of organisms when will that condition apply it's not permanent okay so if the unfavorable conditions are if the unfavorable conditions you know they are localized they are localized or uh, they are for a short span of time if they are for a short span of time then they have 
two more alternatives. What are the two more alternatives? Let us discuss. They can either be a migrator or it can be a suspender. Or it can be a suspender. Now, what are migrators? What are migrators means? Now, if the animals are not able to, if the animals are not able to regulate or confirm, then they act as migrators. Migrators means these are the organisms which move away from the stressful conditions to more hospitalized conditions and they will return back when the conditions are normal again to their own places. So what can we write? So migrators are the organisms which migrate from the stressful conditions. They are moving off from the stressful conditions to hospitable conditions, favorable conditions, favorable areas. So they are moving from the stressful habitats to hospitable conditions or hospital habitats. Okay. And return back. They don't stay back there. And return back when the conditions become favorable. Are called migrators, isn't it? So we can take a simple example. In uh, summer holidays, so where do we uh, try to go? So we don't try to go to a hotter area. We try to go to hill stations like uh, Kuli Manali, Uti and all like that places. From Delhi, we go to Shimla. Right? And other hilly stations like uh, Uti, Kulu Manali, like that, we go to hilly stations. Why? So, because we know here summer, the temperatures are peak. When we go to hilly station, the temperature will be less there. So, it will be favorable for us. In the same manner, if you take the case of uh, birds, you know. So, we'll take an example of a national park. Keolado National Park. This is a new name. Actually, it is Bharatpur Bird Sanctuary. It was earlier called Bharatpur Bird Sanctuary. Okay, so actually, it was Bharatpur Bird Sanctuary, which is in Rajasthan. Now it has been renamed to Kyolodi National Park. Now, every winter, we see that many birds from Siberia. Many birds from Siberia and from extreme colder northern regions, they migrate to Kyoloda National Park in search of favorable grounds because there it was very much cool. So they are moving to a moderate areas or favorable areas. So we can tell that many birds, okay, move from Siberia and other colder northern regions. Where are they migrating? They are moving from Siberia and other colder northern regions to Bharatpur. To Bharatpur Bird Sanctuary. Or they are moving to Kerala National Park where the temperature is favorable. Where the temperature is favorable. They are moving to these areas where temperature is favorable, right? And they will stay back here till the conditions are good here. And again, where the previous conditions are better, they will move from here and they'll go back to their original places. Now, the question which should come in our mind is, first of all, why did they migrate? And again, how do they come to know that uh, the conditions in their original places, how they, made, they became favorable, how will they come to know that? So, see... The conditions are not favorable in their own places which made them to migrate kilometers, meters and meters. They will fly and they will go to new areas and they will stabilize themselves there. They will stay there and when the season changes, there the condition becomes hotter. 
when the conditions becomes hotter means there the condition became unfavorable now so it understands that here now in this new place the condition became unfavorable means my earlier conditions were became favorable so then it will migrate and it will go now why it went from this area to this area so it can sustain here also the new area where it goes is called as breeding ground why it goes there for breeding it goes there so we call it as a breeding ground means keolada national park is a breeding ground breeding habitat for many birds now what do you mean by breeding ground photo periodism will tell photo period will tell so there at that particular temperature only the gonads will become active those birds at that particular temperature gonads become active when the gonad become active then only they can participate in breeding then only they can give birth to the next generations means they go like this and they come with their families with children they'll come back to their original places when the temperatures become harsh there it's understood that the temperatures here are favorable they'll move from there to here so such type of organisms are called as migrators examples are birds a very good example is bird now let us talk about suspenders then what are suspenders many bacteria you take and fungi you take and lower plants many bacteria fungi and lower plants to tide over unfavorable conditions to sustain from the unfavorable conditions what they will do so they uh, will slow down their metabolism they will make a thick wall or spore coat around itself and then they will become dormant they will become dormant now such type of uh, organisms are called as suspenders now let us discuss so we discussed what are regulators we also discussed what are confirmers then we told if the stressful conditions are localized or for a short period of time then the organisms have two more alternatives one alternative is migrators the last alternative is suspender now we will see what do you mean by suspending their metabolism i have given the example for suspenders as bacteria fungi and lower plants let us discuss about suspenders this suspend their metabolism who will suspend their metabolism i gave the examples as bacteria another example i gave is fungi another example i gave is lower plants so they tide over unfavorable conditions how do they tide over unfavorable conditions by making a spore by making a thick spore wall or cyst wall by forming a thick spore wall or cyst wall it will form a spore wall or cyst wall it will form a spore wall or cyst wall and it will suspend its metabolism it will slow down its metabolism and slows down its metabolism somehow it will slow down its metabolism and somehow it will survive when the favorable conditions are back then the thick spore wall or cyst wall will break and the vegetative body will come and it will establish themselves so then they are called as suspenders now but in higher plants what is the case okay if you go to higher plants in higher plants what is the end product of sexual reproduction it is the seed now we know about the seed that seed to tide over unfavorable conditions it becomes it go to dormancy right now the seeds they show dormancy they show dormancy to cope up with the unfavorable conditions now when the inhibitors are broken when it accumulates the energy when the outer seed coats are thin when the outer conditions are favorable then slowly the seed starts establishing itself and you know the seedling comes up right the seedling establishes in higher plants the seed so a mechanism of dormancy and we know what is that plant growth regulator which helps in dormancy abscisic acid abscisic acid it induces dormancy in the seeds and it will allow the seed to cope up the stressful conditions 
Now, in bacteria, fungi in lower plants, they form a spore wall and they slow down their metabolism. In higher plants, the seeds show dormancy. Now, if we take the example of zooplanktons, in zooplanktons, what is the case? In zooplanktons, so temporarily they will suspend their metabolism. Temporarily they will suspend their metabolism and they will go to an inactive stage which is called diopause. Zooplanktons go to a state of diopause. Now what is diopause? Diopause is a state of suspended development. What is diopause? It is a state of suspended development this came in neat ug 2016 question paper what is diopause the answer is it is a state of suspended development so they'll go to an inactive stage zooplanktons which is called suspended development they'll suspend their development they'll escape from the time and for example if we take the polar bears and all now they escape in time right they escape in time how do they escape peak winter how do the polar bears escape peak winter they escape peak winter by going to winter sleep which is called hibernation and they escape peak summer like if you go to the other organisms like fishes and amphibians amphibians and fishes they escape peak summer by summer sleep which is called estivation so all these are the responses of the organisms to the various abiotic factors to the stressful conditions we discussed about regulators we discussed about confirmers we discussed about migrators we discussed about suspenders under suspenders, we took bacteria, fungi, lower plants as an example, making spores and cysts. We took higher plants as an example, making seeds and the seeds are undergoing dormant structures. Then we were taking about a zooplankton, which is microscopic. It undergoes a state which is called diapas, which is a state of suspended development. Then polar bears, they avoid peak winter by going to hibernation. And amphibians and fishes, they escape peak summer by going to estivation. So this is today's class. In the next class, we will discuss about adaptations. What are morphological adaptations? What are physiological adaptations? And what are behavioral adaptations? How do the plants do these adaptations? Right? So, if you like the content, you can like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.